Welcome to part three. <laughs> Lost my mind there. Part three of our series. So uh, for this one, we're going to be finishing up the spear. Um, the first step here, I have everything already glued in in place, and I'm, I'm ready to start shaping. I'm just going to be drawing in a center line. You'll notice I do that on all of my pieces. I always draw in a center line. Um, and then for the shape on this piece, I'm just freehanding it. I'm not too concerned with how exact the proportions are because there's a lot of wood on this spear that I'm going to have to be removing. Um, I'm just kind of taking the shape. Now one of the things that I did with this spear, and it was a result of uh, the requests that came in from the client, was uh, they wanted me to keep as much of the bill as I could. So normally when I make a spear, uh, a marlin tip spear, I actually cut off quite a bit of the bill um, so that the diameter that meets the wood is anywhere between an inch to an inch and a half um, and that way it just has a, a good consistency all the way down and it's roughly the size of spear that you know, you'd hold in your hand and, and it would fit well um, but because they wanted me to keep more of the bill um, the marlin bills get thick really fast and so with their, they're kind of very thin and then all of a sudden right as they get to where they connect to the jaw they, they widen really quickly and so once they get to that point, it's really hard to keep those larger sections. Um, and so obviously I, I couldn't have a spear that was <laughs> two, two and a half inches thick all the way down the spear length. It just, it'd be unbelievably heavy and, and unwieldy and it just wouldn't look good. And so what I did with this is I have a, a taper go from the joint or the connection part of the bill that then tapers all the way down, um, but then to balance out the piece, um, just like on a like a an actual spear, a larger spear, where you might have a weight at the end to counterbalance. I'm flailing out the wood, um, and the design that I'm putting at the end here is actually similar to what you would see on some of my Leomano, the the shark tooth paddle. Um, so it comes out to like a, a diamond shape, and and then finally tapers to a point. Uh, making the spears are a little bit challenging uh, now. If 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 I had a lathe, and this was a perfectly cylindrical spear, uh, this wouldn't be too bad, um, but I don't have a lathe. <laughs> and this isn't a perfectly cylindrical spear. <laughs> so it's, it's widening from where the bill connects, and then it's going from like an a oval shape that's going to taper down into a cylindrical shape, and then it's going to widen back out again into a diamond shape. And so uh, the first thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm taking off the corners. So whenever you're doing anything like this, um, I, there's ways you can do it by hand without using uh, an angle grinder. Uh, I use an angle grinder just because it's how I do most of my shaping and I'm just familiar with it. Um, there's a lot of really great hand tools that you can use to uh, shave off those corners. Um, but essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking out the corners um, line at a time. And then once I get it down to a certain definition, I then start bringing in my uh, sander. Um, now you'll probably know, you'll, you may have seen me do it on the angle grinder a little bit, and you'll see me doing it here as well. Um, you see how I'm twisting as I'm sanding? So essentially what I'm doing there is I'm kind of using my hand as a lathe. Um, the twisting motion helps smooth off those edges. Uh, if I don't do that and I just sand parallel to the spear, um, you'll feel it. When you run your hand against the spear, you'll feel those ridges that run along the piece. So the only way that I've been able to find to get rid of them really well is to twist. So as I sand, I twist, whether I'm doing it by hand or if I'm using uh, this disc sander, um, either way. So here I have the, the majority of my shaping done. Um, with pretty much any piece, I kind of check whether or not it's straight, how it feels in the hand. Uh, I like them to be balanced to a point. Um, all of my shaping, my fine shaping, I tend to do with either a chisel or with the disc sander. Um, I've just gotten very comfortable with using the disc sander to put in fine edge work and, and to smooth it out and to, to bring that in, and that's what I'm doing there. Um, I'll probably bring this piece to maybe 220 grit um, before I... Uh, cut in the, the grooves into the bill um, and then once I've cut in the grooves to the bill and, and drilled the holes I'll probably sand it after that to, to 320. So the the teeth that I'm going to be putting into this bill are going to be tiger shark teeth. 
so they have that natural curve, so they act as barbs. Um, I, I don't bring them all the way t to the tip for a few reasons. Uh, the, the main reason is it just gets too thin and brittle, um, so I like to keep the tip as sturdy as it can just so that um, it, it doesn't break off. Um, and then just for proportions wise, to make sure everything looks nice, um, I, I try to leave about the same amount of uh, length on either side of the bill, so the teeth are essentially like perfectly in the in the center. Um, I'm just cutting this out with uh, my Dremel. So you, you've seen if you've seen any of my videos be fast in the in the past, uh, you've seen me use the Dremel quite a bit. Um, I'm just very comfortable with using it. All I'm doing is putting in about oh a quarter of an inch wide and maybe half an inch half to a quarter of an inch deep. It kind of depends on what size of teeth I'm using. Um, and then once I have those grooves hollowed out and straightened out and looking good is when I'll I'll get the teeth re ready and prepped and and put them in. Um, the the teeth uh, when I get to putting in the teeth I'll how I line those out is I'll do one side and then I'll match the other side because uh, I make the grooves match in distance. So I really only have to line out one side. Um, and then here I'm just putting in uh, sanding down to that 320. Uh, this is where I once I get to 320 is where I really am careful with my edge work, um, making sure that all the lines are clean, that the, especially on the spear, on the ihe, that it, it's smooth to the touch so that as you run your hand along it, um, you don't feel any large grooves. Uh, one thing that's kind of neat, you can see already there's a little bit of figure and a little bit of spalting to the coal wood. It's really pretty. So I'm, I'm actually really excited on it as I was, as I was working on it. <laughs> Uh, so, like all my pieces, um, I put in just a little bit of epoxy when I go to first put in the teeth. Um, I, I don't have to, but the reason why I do it is because the epoxy just helps the teeth sit in place while I tap the teeth and, and, and lash them into place. Um, I, I would like to make a piece without using any epoxy. It just takes a lot longer because you have to lash as you're tapping and, and it just takes ages. <laughs> uh, uh, what I normally do though is I put just a light layer of epoxy and then um, once the epoxy is set I'll then go back after I've uh, drilled all the holes and I'll clean out as much epoxy as I can so it's largely just the lashing that holds the teeth into place. Um, the teeth on these, uh, when I set them in I don't use any other wood. Oftentimes when I mix my um, epoxy I'll mix in some wood shavings. Um, gluing them into the bill, I leave it as a clear epoxy just because the bill's, you know, it's lighter, it's clear, it, it just mixes a little bit better. Um, so here we're just tapping in each one of those holes into the teeth. Uh, I, I use, I think it's a 1 8 inch. I'd have to look at that again. Um, so the, the center holes for these are just go down the center. Um, the lashing on this is going to be a fairly standard lashing. It's going to create like a triangle shape between the teeth and each of the center holes. Um, the dr drilling the Marlin bells is actually surprisingly tough. Um, it is a bone. It's a very thick, dense bone, and it is kind of hard to, to drill into. Um, once I have that down and sanded, um, the last step before I go to lash is I, I oil the piece. Um, it, it took quite a bit of time to oil this piece. I, I skipped quite a bit of this footage uh, just because it was so large. Um, and it's really hard to see because the lighting, but it had a really pretty curl and uh, you can really see the figure and some of that spalting start to come out. It looked really nice. I was actually very pleased with it. Um, I, I did put a heavy layer of, of oil on this piece just because I wanted to make sure that it soaked into both the bill and the koa. And then I let it sit for a minimum of 24 hours. Um, I don't technically have to let it sit that long. I just r really want it to soak into the wood and, and give it time to really dry. Um, the next up here is going to be lashing in the teeth. And uh, like I mentioned before, I'm just using a, a pretty standard lashing. It's going to be that triangle shape. There's a few different ways to lash. Um, this is the most common method that I use. There's a couple other methods that I have used in the past. One of them is a cross. Um, I haven't used that in a while. Um, I've just kind of liked the, the triangle shape a little bit better. Um, the method I use kind of ch changes with time. It, I just start liking one over the other and, and <laughs> follow that pattern. Uh, 
one thing that you'll notice right there is I was I put a little bit of super glue on the end of the lashing. So the reason why I did that is it kind of hardens that section. So I hardened about a quarter, uh, half an inch actually, to three quarters of an inch, um, and that just helps, especially in those center uh, holes where it has four threads going through. It really just helps with getting it through and, and making it so that I can finish lashing it up without too much difficulty or complexity. Um, then once I tie in the end knots, then I, I, I just push the rest of those ends into those same holes. It just kind of cleans it up, makes it a little bit better. Um, and you can really see the, that triangle shape now. So one of the challenges I had with this beer was it was so large that uh, it didn't fit on my workbench. And so I have it draped across my, my new bandsaw. Uh, I got a brand new bandsaw. I was super excited for that. It took, geez, eight months for it to finally come. Um, <laughs> So I have it draped across there, and, and I'm just using the towels just so I don't uh, scratch it up against the metal. Um, and so here I'm getting ready to lash the feathers into place. Um, you, you'll notice they're kind of already stuck there. Um, I just put a tiny bit of super glue just to kind of hold them in place while I lash them. Um, once they're lashed, the, the lashing really holds onto them. So the lashing is the primary connection point. Um, what I'm doing here, though, is the, the bill, I'm, I'm lashing up and so what the, the challenge with that is as when you go to tighten you, you pull tight on that lashing it's going to naturally want to go down the bill and it can be a real pain it can be a real challenge to lash that up and so what i did is i put a small groove on one edge um, into the bill so that the lashing uh, catches on that edge and that way as i pull tight the lashing won't slide down the bill um, it'll just stay where i want it to um, and then I, I go ahead and just bring that up. As I was lashing, I would uh, cross over, so it just keeps it tight. And then uh, here I'm just tying up the ends and, and, and pulling it through. Um, it took about, I don't know, 45 minutes actually, about an hour to lash that just because of the crossovers. Um, lashing always takes a while. It's, it's <laughs> one of my least favorite parts of the whole process just because it's, it's kind of uh, mundane. But it's also one of the best parts of the process because that's really when the piece comes together. Um, just the contrast between the wood and the bill and the lashing and the teeth really looks nice. I, I really enjoy it. Um, I, I kind of messed up my close-up. You can't really see the lashing on the bill. <laughs> uh, so here's the final piece. Um, I was really pleased with it. It worked really well. Um, it's about six and a half feet tall, so it's probably the tallest Ihe or short spear I've made. Um, but it, it turned out really well. I was, I was really happy with it. Worked out uh, overall really well. Um, I was, the, the piece really fit good. Um, I like the dimensions and the, the size and the portion of it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, enjoy the last couple sections here. Um, if you liked it, hit the like button and subscribe. Uh, the next piece will be a Triton. Really excited about that. Uh, again, mahalo. Thank you everyone for, for joining. See you next time. Aloha.